hello and welcome back and yes as a title card suggests today we are going to talk about the 4bay NAS systems from Synology. I'm going to talk through the latest generation of 4bays that you can currently buy right now in summer 2021 and hopefully tell you guys what is the best 4bay for you. But before we go any further let's be honest about this if you are looking at buying a 4bay NAS from Synology although they have several options currently available at the moment for technically five I would say, let's be completely straight, this is the best one. This is the Solange DS920 Plus, and although they have a lot of different NAS solutions, and although this solution is about a year old now, at the time of recording, I've got to say, this is still the best 4-bay out there. This video is not a video entitled, The Best Solange 4-bay NAS, because that would be this one. This is about going through all of the 4-bays and comparing them all, what are their pros, what are their cons, and hopefully help you decide which one's best for your data and your budget but there's always going to be the overhanging subject that this one the 920 plus is just going to be overwhelmingly the best at everything and there is a reason why it's the most expensive it's the reason why it features on so many of my videos so do bear that in mind but let's talk about four bay NAS solutions a number of people again when you make that jump from the cloud service providers your subscription by paid ones you're moving towards your own private server one that you want to access remotely or via the internet you want to use it for media you want to use it for business you want to use it for surveillance you want to use it for backups and it's with that in mind that it's worth highlighting that this solution along with all the other Synology four bays out there provide a huge amount of software and services for you straight off the bat. And before we talk about what makes them different, we should talk about what makes them the same. So it's worth highlighting that all of the four base that we're gonna talk about today, all of them include the following. Firstly, they all arrive with support of DSM 6.2 and DSM 7. So you can pick and choose which one you wanna go for there. On top of that, they all arrive with support of Synology's hybrid RAID system. Synology Hybrid RAID or SHR allows you to mix and match the hard drives inside these systems. So although you wouldn't do that on day one, maybe you'll get a four bay like this and pop two hard drives in at the beginning. And then after that, you add more drives later on down the line, you might find you wanna install bigger hard drives and traditional RAID configurations will not allow you to mix and match bigger drives it'll only see every drive as the smallest available drive but in SHR you're able to mix and match those drives so a few years down the line if you put bigger drives in you're able to take advantage of those larger storage drives as you add more and more drives and again all of the four bays arrive with support of that on top of that there is support of the majority of Synology's own applications so whether that's using uh, photo uh, stuff there and particularly if you're going to be taking advantage of AI based photo recognition all of them arrive with AI photo recognition and thing recognition luckily there is enough horsepower and even the lowest level 4-way from Synology in order to take advantage of Synology photos or moments in the other version DSM 6.2 also surveillance with all of these systems arriving with two camera licenses you can take advantage of that surveillance platform and all of them they start with the least amount of memory I believe at one gigabyte of memory which is still lots to be getting on with for a bunch of cameras in your home or business whether you're using the music apps the photo apps or Synology video station all of these systems do provide a great base level of multimedia support throughout your home over DLNA or remotely with handling of both 1080p and 4k across all four systems but different extent and certainly when it comes to transcoding or using third-party apps like plex media server if you're going to take advantage of synology's own suite the collaboration suite of application i'm pleased to confirm that pretty much all of those applications ready from synology office synology drive synology chat mail plus all of these applications run on this system along with as mentioned the audio and the video apps and of course download station as well there's even support of that great multi kind of access and multi backup tool hyper backup on all four of these systems to allow you to create a very bespoke and very evolved backup strategy for your system not just all of the devices that are backing up to the nas but the idea that the nas is backing up onto other systems but that's pretty much what all four of these systems have in common even though they're different pricing and in some cases use different chassis they all arrive with support of all of the things mentioned but you didn't come here to know what they've got in common you wanted to know what they're different what makes them different and whether you should spend extra or save a bit of bunts on the other one so let's get this off the table get the graphics on the screen and have a look at all four of the current generation of four bay nazis and compare them 
So on the table here we have all four four bay NASs and of course the least expensive there at the end the DS420J that was first revealed to us at the end of 2019. This system arrives at about $299. Yes, I'm going to be talking in dollars just because the majority of people who watch these videos are based in the US. I thought it just makes it easier for you guys but currency conversions will obviously improve that for you. But $299 for the J series there at the end. Next up we have the DS418. This is a NAS that's more than three years old. This is uh, knocking around for about $330 to $350 shopping around. Next up, you've got a much newer, um, I think just over a year, the DS420 Plus. That knocks around for about $430 to $450. And finally, at the end of the table, there is the DS920 Plus. Again, generally, you look around and you'll find it for about $550 to $500 and fifty dollars but it is a system that tends to be on sale during prime day and black friday and seasonal sales so that price point isn't always as concrete as you might think now despite the fact they do or well, at least three of them look incredibly similar i will highlight that the internal architecture actually does differ in a number of ways first and foremost we can talk about the cpu the cpu you know let's be pretty call a spade a spade it is the brains of the outfit and two of these systems arrive with Realtek-based processors. These arrive with support of the RTD1296, a quad-core 1.4 gigahertz ARM-based processor, 64-bit. And it also arrives with soldered DDR4 memory. You can't upgrade them, but the J at the end there has got one gig of memory, and the 418 has got two gig of memory. It's quite strange that two systems released so far apart have got the same um, CPU inside but that extra memory does make all of the difference it allows it to take advantage um, of a BTRFS something that the other two end of the table have definitely got under the hood but that CPU which arrives with support of 4k transcoding less so in the J because that memory does end up being quite a bottleneck um, that CPU is still able to take advantage of a number of those newer applications thanks to it being a 64-bit processor but they're always going to pale in comparison to this end of the table. The DS420 arrives with a dual-core Intel Celeron processor, and that is the J4025, which is a dual-core 2.0 gigahertz processor that can be burst when needed up to 2.9 gigahertz. So that's a big old jump there when you need it inside. Also arrives with DDR4 memory, and it's 2 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded up to 6 gig. Of memory which is not a lovely little high number they're a bit weird I'll be honest 6 gig doesn't sit well with me as a memory upgrade but it does take advantage of that DDR4 2666 megahertz memory now if you want to go you know double down a little bit and it should be noted if you look at the price point if they are still on screen that it's still quite similar in price to the 920 the 920 arrives with the same family series processor but it's the J4125 processor, which is a quad-core 2.0 gigahertz CPU that can be burst up to 2.7. So a little bit of a dip there in terms of the boost. But it does arrive with 4 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded to 8 gig. So again, great base level resources and a greater expandability of those resources. Now, why are these CPUs better? It's not just that there are higher frequency over the 1.4 gigahertz featured on the um, ARM based processors there, but it is the fact they are x86 64-bit processors. They have embedded graphics, so they have an area of the processor that is dedicated to graphical manipulation, whether it's enjoying 1080p or 4K media, whether you're gonna be using it for virtualization, for surveillance, ultimately anything graphical or more complex visual data, these devices are going to use less resources doing it. Some of those tasks can be done by the ARM or ARM-based NASs, but by no means to the same degree. And I think that makes a huge impact with people that take advantage of these NASs and want to use them for multimedia reasons and don't realise that even relatively low-level multimedia requests are going to use a lot of system resources. So it all comes down to whether you're a single or multiple user environment, whether you should go for those ones there. But... The hardware architecture on these isn't just better for those reasons. There's also, of course, the fact that the 920 at the end has NVMe SSD upgrade slots. You can add super fast SSDs inside that system to bolster and improve the internal operation speed, particularly on more common accessed files. 
you will have to you know let it run for a while and burn in before you can really see the advantages of caching but it is most certainly there and not only is it on the most expensive unit but it's also available on the 420. The DS420 kind of serves as an alternative to the old Play series and its price point although closer to that of the 920 there it does still manage to arrive with a lot of the features that we've seen in previous generations of Play and the high-end nine, um, nine drive supported uh, four bay series there now all of them arrive with support of the current generation of 18 tb hard drives that go all the way up to 20 tb if you like but i would highlight that the expandability of the 918 and um, uh, the 920 at the end there should be highlighted the 920 it can be expanded by another five bays of storage using the dx517 and i would say that Although it's not quite as good as using an 8-bay NAS, it's still quite useful to have that scalability in your product's lifespan. And if you are buying a NAS and you're saving a little bit now, thinking you can have more money to spend later on and you didn't really want to buy an 8-bay or a 12-bay, that expandability on the 920 is going to be of use to many people out there. And it's something I think is a real shame that we don't see expansions being supported on more NASs. It feels like something Synology do to upsell their devices rather than something that these other devices aren't able to do but again without having the tech specs in front of me or knowing about the PCI lean, PCIe lanes it makes it very hard for me to, to make a conclusive um, statement on that but I will say that I think it's a bit of a jip that expandability isn't more widely available across their ranges. Um, now when it comes to network connectivity when these devices are attached in your network environment uh, all of them take advantage of one gigabit ethernet which is a real shame because i think one gbe has kind of overstayed its welcome in network servers particularly now that the hard drives and ssds in these systems promote the performance threshold in the several hundreds of megabytes per second and once you factor in a raid configuration one gbe is just a little bit underwhelming overall um, and although all of them use one gbe i will highlight that almost all of them have got two lan ports the only one that doesn't is that J series at the end. The DS420J has got a single 1GBE LAN port there on the rear. It's also got two USB 3 ports which you can use for expandable storage, a very small number of supported peripherals, particularly in DSM7, and you can attach UPSs and stuff like that to it. But the expandability, as mentioned, is only available in the eSATA connected device there. So it's something that you physically can't attach an expansion even to test it out. But the other three devices, your 418, your 420, and your 920, all of these have got two LAN ports on the rear, two times one GBE connectivity, thereby effectively doubling your potential network bandwidth between your uh, NAS and a supported switch or a lag-connected PC environment. But I will say that even at that point, with these devices having, oh, I hate seagulls, um, if all of these devices have got four bays of storage, they can massively saturate two 1GBE ports. And I think it's a real shame that Synology in their most recent releases didn't embrace something greater than 1GBE. I'm not surprised, but I am a little disappointed by it. Um, they've all got connected USB 3 ports there. There's no USB 2 here present whatsoever. They're all USB 3. So again, if you do use external devices, you do have USB 3. And I say USB 3, it's USB 3.2 Gem 1. Gotta love that new naming convention. But in terms of hardware architecture, it must be becoming abundantly clear to you that the more powerful systems here on the end you know, they do earn a lot of the extra bunts, the, the price tag for it with the NVMe SSD upgrade slots, the better performing CPU there inside, the uh, twice the gigabit LAN connectivity of a number of systems. There's a lot going for these. And of course, you've also got Synology features like Synology Hybrid RAID there. But <coughs> let's talk about the software because we've already talked about what all four of these software, de uh, these devices can do, what you can do on any one of these four systems. But we've not really touched on that much what these things can do in of themselves. Something that the J-Series or the more affordable Realtek Real NASes hit a wall really early doors. So the J-Series, everything I described at the beginning of the video, that's basically it. It can't do much more than that. I made sure to just kind of highlight that, that level of everything I said that all four of these can do. That's what the 420J can do. And as we graduate through this range, 
things change rapidly. So the 418, although it's a lot older, thanks to that larger amount of memory, as mentioned, it has support of BTRFS, but it's more than that. But thanks to the extra memory, it can do more at any given time, run some certain processes, run more cameras. It can just do more. And although its price tag is higher than the 420J, it's not that much higher. And I actually prefer the design of the chassis as well of that 418 overall. It may be an older system, but it's still got the two years of warranty that most of these systems have. The one on the end has got three years that can be extended. But still, if you're looking at the 420J, don't bother, just pay the extra and get the 418 or at least wait until whatever follows up the 418 comes to market. Now, once we look at the other end of the table, that's where we see some real software performance, not only in terms of versatility and responsiveness and just the general services offered by the device, but seriously, the things that these systems can run are so system unique. We mentioned the SSD caching there, of course, these two devices support SSD caching in a big, big, big way thanks to those NVMe upgrade slots. And that performance extra translates exceptionally well into certain applications that can only run on these. The biggest example, of course, is virtualization with Synology's Virtual Machine Manager. VMM uh, run obviously better on the 920 uh, with its better baseline hardware and four core CPU early doors. It allows virtual machine utilization, although better on the 920, to still be available on both of the 64-bit x86 based processors. So you've got virtual machines, you've got Docker and containers, you've got 4K transcoding and 1080p transcoding, Inplex and natively using Synology's video station app. Gotta love that app. On top of that, you've got the entire access to their collaboration suite we mentioned earlier, but better um, multi-user and account uh, support at once. So more simultaneous downloads, more shared folders, more iSCSI targets and LUNs, um, more um, shared drives, basically just more activity and more users, even more mail accounts and more chat accounts in a lot of those kind of business applications for all your staff and co contacts to communicate. And then on top of the support of Hyper Backup on all of these systems, that multi-tiered backup solution, these two have also got support of Active Backup Suite, that mwah, great one portal multi-platform backup tool that can be utilized not only with other bare metal PC and desktop systems, but can also be linked to some of those cloud software as a service, SAAS platforms like Office 365 and um, Google Workspace. All of that could be integrated and backed up together on these systems. And now we're starting to see hybrid share arriving in DSM-7. That also means that this these two systems here do a greater job of linking all of your different storage systems, whether they're gonna be used for backup, synchronization or failover, these two systems bring a whole lot to the party in terms of capabilities and more important than anything not only because they have those apps that these two don't but also it's the idea they use less resources why while they're doing them and ultimately it means that you can get more done over time remember right the way back at the video we talked about the price difference between these that 420 was knocking around for about 299 dollars which again was only about two to $250 difference at the other end of the table. And I can tell you right now, if you're going to use your NAS one, two, three times a week at least, if you're backing up all your devices, if you're watching a Plex media server or knocking some cameras around, spend the extra money and head to this end of the table. Because although all four of these systems are very capable, you get what you pay for. And the 920, and I'm sounding like a broken record, is still one of the best four bays that you've ever put out there. I should also highlight, before someone corrects me in the comments, I'm well aware there's a 4 bay I've not mentioned, the DVA3221, a GPU-powered £1,600-pound 4 bay. I didn't include it in this because that's just way out there. That's so enterprise, it's unreal. But if you are looking at the most powerful technical 4 bay from Synology, maybe check that one out. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.